So top five will transfer from each of the heats. Top three will redraw. Everybody else will head to the B main. We're going to take a total of 28 cars to the Art Hill Memorial 42 lap feature event. So they move Trevor Young up to the front row. Newell gets moved back a row. And we'll watch how this one comes together here down the back straightaway. Field filing up in double file formation. And we get set to roll again. So Martin Schroeder, Sean Evans, Matt Newell, Murray Nichols, the top four. Then it's Newell in the 16X. Andy Reichman in the 39R, Lucas Lubin, Mark Bazine, Mike Sarantakos, Mike Garbison, and Dan Erskine. Here we go again with key race number one. Green flag is out, we're underway. They're calling the 29 of Lucas. As they come around, they're talking about it anyway. As they come down the back stretch, it is Evans. Leading Young down the back straightaway, and then Newell in the number two. Well, Lubin gained a couple spots, then gave him up again in turn one, so I'm not sure if they're going to move him back or not, but up front, it's all Sean Evans here after lap one. Evans, Young, and Newell lead the field here with Reichman running in the fourth spot as Young fades up to the top. Here comes last year's Art Hill Memorial winner, Bazine, with a good head of steam out of turn number two. Bazine holding that fifth and final transfer spot right now, but he's looking to get up into that redraw as he gets to the inside of Reichman, who gets squirrely in the 39R, and now they make contact on the front stretch. Everybody looking for room here as they enter into turn number one. That allows Lightning McQueen Evans to run it down the back straightaway and roll away ahead of Matt Newell and the 21X of Bazine here, who runs to the outside of Newell into turn three and four. So put Bazine up into a redraw spot here. Evans, Bazine, and Newell currently holding redraw spots. Then Schroeder and Reichman holding the transfer positions with Lubin, the first car on the outside, looking in. But now he goes to the inside of Schroeder in turn two. Working it down into three. Here comes Bazine to the inside of Evans, 95. And we got a new leader onto the front straightaway with two laps to go. Mark Bazine takes the lead and will roll away here ahead of the 95 of Evans. So Bazine from eighth on the grid up into the lead here and pulling away from Evans, Newell, Reichman and Schroeder. Lubin right there for that final transfer spot. White flag coming this time by. Remember these cars redraw tonight or they drew for position, I should say, coming into tonight. So that is why you see a guy like Bazine at the front of the field here in qualifying race number one. Onto the back shoot they go. Mark Bazine leading Evans, Newell, Reichman and Schroeder. Lubin is still there but can't get around Schroeder for the final transfer. Bazine's going to head out a corner four for the final time, and he will get the win in BCG Electoral Heat Race number one. Second will be Evans, third is Newell, fourth will be Reichman, fifth is Schroeder. So that puts Lubin, Erskine, Nichols, Guyverson, Suratakos, and Newell into the B main. Heat race number two is rolling to the speedway. Starting on the pole from Dundas, the installation 32 will be Jillian Hills. Starting second from Caledonia, the Timpson Auto, number nine of Tim DeBoer. Number 90 is Chad Smelzer. Starting fourth from Cambridge, the Tire Connections 18 is Adam Hallett. Starting fifth from Dundas, the Zerkeys Fine Foods 21, Jonathan Erden. Starting sixth from St. Catharines, the number four X of Jason Gattu. Starting seventh from Hagersville, the Jibs Action Sports 84B, Devin Bacher. Starting eighth from Woodstock, the Sierra Construction 66 X is Brandon Jansen's. Then it's the 55 from Dundas, Rob Slater. From Hamilton, the Arnott's Automotive 64, Doug Erskine. And from Aylmer, the McGregor Auto Parts, number eight of Barry Westman. So again, the top five will transfer from this. Top three will redraw for their feature starting positions. Six laps to distance on HRW Automotive Mini Stock Heat Race, number two. Just want to mention Jason Gattu starting third on the outside. Swept the weekend in Niagara last weekend. Tommy won at Merrillville and Hummerstone. Trying to keep that train rolling on the outside in the number four. Here we go. They're already four wide into turn number one. Yeah, wasting no time here as they want to get a starting spot without having to go to the B mains. As you mentioned, Katu with a very good run down in the Niagara area. He did get a feature win here last year. So keep an eye on that white number four car. But right now he's on the outside looking in. 
As we mentioned, everybody drew for position to start tonight's Art Hill Memorial Race as they come down. Top five will qualify. Top three will make the redraw. And they come onto the back straightaway. Jillian Hills with the lead. Hallett way loose on the bottom of two, and he gathers that one up as Jansen's takes some evasive action on the outside and here comes racing Jason Katu down on the inside. That could have been disaster for Brandon Jansen. He's second in the championship standings coming into the evening. Just 14 points behind Jason Laguero but now he gets clear of that melee back there. So it's Hills leading then Jansen's Hallett making a run back on him. Then it is Katu in the transfer spot along with Chad Smelzer. So everybody else behind the number 90 car still looking for their transfer spots into the feature. Yeah, Adam Hallett here in the 18 car. I gotta wonder, Tommy, Mr. Stats guy, do you think it's possible that he could be the first third generation mini stalker here at Oshweekin? His grandfather, Ted, raced, his dad, Kelly, raced, and here's Adam racing here at Oshweekin, the third generation here for the Hallett racing crew. I gotta say, there's a pretty good chance of that, Clinton, as mostly second generation drivers out here. Two to go for Hills up front, then Jansen's Hallett two and Smelzer, but here comes DeBoer looking for that final transfer. They work it here off the backside of turn number two. Hallett a bit wiggle waggle onto the back straightaway and Jason Katu pulls that front wheel drive machine right down in front. They come off a of turn number four. Jillian Hills to the white flag looking for a good redraw spot for the 32 team. So Hills in the lead here with one lap to go. Jansen still holding second. Hallett working on the final redraw spot on the four of Jason Gattu. Boy, that would be a big success for him tonight if he could get in that redraw and he gets way loose at three and four, just hang on to a qualified spot is the game plan. Hills will win it. It'll be Jansen's over, Gattu, Hallett, and DeBoer, I believe, are the top five. Yes, says the transponder. So that will be your unofficial top five qualifiers. Slater, Erskine, Ayrton, and Westman headed back to the B main. He race number three of four rolling onto the track. Now starting on the pole from Caledonia, the AM roofing number 12X will be Jake Bazine. Starting second from Dundas, the, the Burger Barn number 10 is Laura Hughes. Starting fourth from Woodstock, the Wismers Auto Parts 99, Robin Elliott. Starting fifth from Hamilton, the number 17 is Mike Taylor. Starting sixth from Cambridge, the Gary Down Auto Service number 14, Shane Dixon. Then from Ancaster, the 51 is Trevor Young. From London, the BDS Enterprises number 49 is Gary Hodgson. From Wayne Fleet, the 3K is Evan Curtis. And from Brantford, the MTN Racing, number six of Jason Dixon. Again, top five transfer out of heat race number three. Top three to the redraw. Slow pace being set down the backstretch between Jake Bazine and Rob Twitchett. Six laps again the distance here on heat race number three. And here we go, green flag out from Dale Shuneman. Jake Pazine leads them to turn number one, trying to complete the run like his brother did here in the first qualifying heat race. Laura Hughes now to the inside of Rob Twitchett in the 69 car with Robin Elliott's 99 right there. Twitchett today, Tommy did to catch, had both cars for sale for five grand. So Bazan leads lap number one, Hughes there in the second spot, side by side for third with Elliott and Twitchett. The 69 and Twitchett working that outside line, but here comes Elliott into the third spot and they all gather up in behind them. And Dixon in the back of the three car here as they come on to turns one and two. Now Shane Dixon, car dead in the water here. Out of turn number two, trying to get it running. It is running, but he can't seem to get it in gear. And now Dixon stops here on the back straightaway. So the yellow flight flies, two laps in, four to go in this qualifying heat. Dixon finally gets the 14 refired. And we'll go back with a restart. Don't forget to get your 50-50 tickets up over $500 now. Sellers going through the stands in the pink t-shirts. Flag them down to get in on tonight's 50-50 draw. And again, we ask that you do not smoke in the seating area. We have designated areas down at the ends of corners one and four. Do not smoke in the seating area or the concession area. Down the back stretch, here we go. I just got word Jason Cadu did not make it through tech. 
Issues with the mechanical slash fuel injection system on the car is the word we've got sorting that over there in the pits. Here we come around off turn number four. Bazine and Hughes back on it with Elliott getting a great jump off of turn number four. And he'll get that second spot behind Jake Bazine before Hughes now back to the third position. As they work it through corners one and two, Bazine leads it down the back stretch for Elliott and Hughes. And then it's three wide for the fourth spot. Three of them looking for a line there. Young trying to find a way into the middle to make it four deep as they come through three and four. Hodgson up on the outside. Nearly four wide here as they come off the fourth turn. Rob Twitch has got that four spot, but the battle for fifth is a wild one. Yeah, two spots up for grabs here, and you've got a gaggle of cars fighting for it as Young now works to the outside, now into the top five. That's a car that's won a feature this year. Trevor Young shocked a lot of people there mid-season when he came out of nowhere, and that 51 car pretty much cranked the field that night. Jake Bazine leading Robin Elliott, Laura Hughes, the top three, Twitch it running fourth, still watching that battle for fifth. Yeah, you still got the sixth there. Jason Dixon on the inside, he'll grab the position back as they work it down the back, shoot. Evan Curtis in the 3K now, he gets a run on Dixon going into three. Curtis to the inside of that Dixon car as they come out of four. Back to one, it's Bazine, Elliott, Hughes, the top three, then Twitch it. And so far, Dixon holding down fifth, but watch Evan Curtis work one and two. Bazine will cruise to the checkered flag in this one as he sees the checkered flag coming off a of corner four and will win the qualifying heat. Robin Elliott will come home in second, then it's Laura Hughes in third, Rob Twitch it fourth, and the fifth and final spot goes to Jason Dixon. Evan Curtis looked like he was learning a lot at the end of that one. And now Dixon and Curtis come together here in turn two. And then Taylor gives the 49 of Hodgson a bit of a shot going into the pit area. Yeah, a flat left front on the 3K here after contact with Dixon coming on the cool down lap. Fourth and final heat race brought to you both from Simcoe, the Hyperlate Motorsports.com number four is Aaron Rewutsky. Starting second from Dundas, the instant installation 81, Carl Salt. Starting third from Woodstock, the Sierra Construction 66, John Jansen. Starting fourth from Brantford, the Action Hand Car Wash 05, Dave Goodacre. Then from Hagersville, the points leader, the Highland Tire number seven is Jason Langero. From London, the BDS Enterprises number 76 of Jamie Googe. From Brantford, the Adam, Re Adam Marshall Remax Broker 93 of Chris Reichman. From Hamilton, the 96 is Brian Crosgrove. From Welland, making his return to Oshriken for the first time this year. The track champion from last year, the Twisted Metal Racing number 06 from Welland is Tyler Lafontese. And from Hagersville, the MTN Racing number 26, Tim Newell. Over the green flag in Evers Financial Group, heat race number four, Ruitsky. Going down will lead them to the green flag. Tyler LaFontaine, he started a shotgun at the back in the 06. He was last year's champion. Work has kept him out of this one, guys. And now he'll try and fight in to a top five set he had this night circled on his calendar all year long. They take it off into three and four. Wooski, your leader, Salt in the second spot. Here comes Jason Longuero, last week's winner, right there in that third position with Jansen and Reitman. Now your top five. Reichman holding down the final spot. LaFontese trying to come up into the battle. Carl Salt double duty tonight, trying to get here underneath Aaron Rowitzki, the rookie, down into three. Salt to the top spot for the moment. On the inside line will grab the lead. That would be something if he could win tonight. He won the Brock Leonard Memorial for the Thunderstocks. No one's ever won both. The Art Hill Memorial and the Brock Leonard Memorial. Had to pay double entry fee tonight to race in two divisions, but for a shot at both of those trophies, you know that was a small price to pay. Now they work in six cars tight. LaFontaise, Reichman, right there with chances as they work it off of turn number four. So the top five continuing to battle it out. You got six cars going for those five spots with LaFontaise getting by Reichman now. Reichman third in the points coming into tonight, right now, just outside the transfer position. Salt holding off Longaro, Jansen, Ruitsky, and then the battle for the last spot. It's LaFontaise, oh, getting together with Ruitsky, and Reichman gets the short end of that stick as the 93 car gets cranked down to the infield, and now Reichman sitting down in the infield. If he doesn't get going, he's going to go down a lap. They're saying he's clear now. Yellow is out. 
Tough break for Reichman as he's gonna go all the way to the back here in this one. I mentioned Rage, we were coming to Green, Tyler LaFontaine, I said to him, you know, how come we haven't seen you? You dominated here last year, so just works, kept me out of it. And I said, why would you put the Nissan stands on the shelf? I mean, they built this new 240. So I like to have a challenge. The other car ran good, we knew that. No more challenges with that one, it's a winner. So they're gonna try and make this one. Here we go, looking for only five with two laps to go. Green play is out, we'll watch LaFontaise from the back of the pack to see if he can work his way back up into the top five. Salt, your leader, Longuero second. He's the point leader heading into tonight in that orange number seven. LaFontaise to the inside here of Newell. He's gonna have to pick off a few more in this closing lap here as they come around to the white flag. Carl Salt leading Longuero, Jansen, Swarowitzki, and then the fifth place car of Brian Crosgrove right now. They work it through, corners one and two, coming to the checkered flag, this time by Carl Salt, your leader over Longuero, Jansen, Swarowitzki, and the 96 of Crosgrove. Does Goodacre have anything here to get into the top five? Off of four, it will be Carl Salt, Jason Longero, Jansen, Srowitzki, and Crosgrove. Your time run through. There's the top five, and they will bring it around now. Reichman not too happy with LaFontaise as they bring it up to the outside here of turn number two. They will get restacked for the B-Main if they weren't in the top five, and that race will come up here in a little bit's time. And at the tail, the 16X of Tyler Newell. So all 11 cars have made the call here for our first of two B mains. Again, just four will transfer to the 42 lap Art Hill Memorial feature. Everybody else will watch from the pits. Six laps of distance. And Lubin and Curtis Again, on that front row, Lubin a regular here. Curtis, an invading driver from down in the Niagara region. Here we go, Lubin with a good start. Off into one they go. Lucas Lubin drives it hard to the middle of one and two. Dan Erskine running in the second spot. Evan Curtis, and then you got the Nichols 43C running in the fourth position. So Nichols has that final transfer spot for the moment, but Trevor Young is right there in the 51 car trying to take that away. Lubin will lead lap number one. Now only four from each will make it on through. And now Nichols doing good battle here with Trevor Young into one and two. Evan Curtis just ahead of them. And Murray Nichols grabs the edge away from Trevor Young. So a good fight going on for that final transfer between the two Mustangs. Behind them, the other Mustang of Shane Dixon, the 14, going to the pit area. Up front, it is still... Yeah, car not running for Dixon as he will lift the 14 car into the pit area. Lucas Lubin leading B-Main number one here for the Art Hill Memorial Race. Down the back stretch, Dan Erskine, Evan Curtis runs second and third, but the battle for fourth and the final ticket into the A is a highly contested battle with Nichols in the 43 C. The 51 of Young grabs the spot, but here comes Hodgson around the outside. Hodgson been running Merrickville regularly as well. Got lots of seat time, the 65-year-old rookie in that 49 car. Way up to the top side, trying to take that fourth and final transfer away from Trevor Young. Hodgson up on the outside, touch wheels a little bit, down the back straight away. Murray Nichols watches them drive away from him and Sarantakis as they come off of four. Hodgson trying to work that outside sprint car lane. Hodgson is still there on Young with two to go up in front of them, and it's Curtis and Erskine working side by side. And now Murray Nichols fighting back. He may have something to say about this transfer spot as well. Well, the benefit of the outside lane for Hodgson is right on the exit of the turns where these guys are trying to get together now. Young up into the side of Hodgson a little bit as they roll together. White flag is out. Who's going to get the fourth and final spot? Hodgson very close to Young there. Didn't like that contact in turn four. And now Hodgson again side by side with Young down the back stretch. And they slide up along each other down into three. Young has to let him go. Hodgson drives it hard to the top side in four. Who's it going to be? It'll be Lubin, Curtis, and Erskine across. And Hodgson will use his rookie experience he gained throughout the summer to come around Trevor Young and grab the spot. Tough break for feature winner Trevor Young this season. He will not make the art hill. Conci number two coming out, last chance, final round for these drivers here. We'll take the final four to make our last eight to add to the 20. We grabbed through the heats, 
for tonight's Art Hill Memorial. Row number one for this B main has 64 of Doug Erskine and the 05 of Dave Goodacre, two veteran drivers. Row number two, the 55 Rob Slater, the 93 Chris Reichman. Row three, it's the 21, on, 21 of Jonathan Erd and the 06 of Tyler Lafontese. Row number four, the number eight is Barry Westman, the 76 is Jamie Googe. Scheduled to start in row number five, the 84B of Devin Bacher, but he has given up the seat to Brad Bacher. So Bacher will start at the tail of the field. The 4C of Jason Katu will move up into that spot. Then the 26 of Tim Newell is starting on the outside of that row. Here we go with B main number two for the mini stocks. Green is out, Doug Erskine, former champ here, gets the jump on the inside lane. He will take the field off into one and two and reel it down the back chute. Erskine followed by Slater now, then the two final transfer cars, Ayrton and Goodacre, but here comes Reichman to the outside, taking third away. Everybody looking from the lane around the outside. LaFontaise to the top side around. Ayrton, Goodacre, and Westman, and he'll bring that 06 car to the outside. The defending champ tonight will be his only night to defend that championship. Everybody's still running close together here. Five laps to go. And the top four, the only one's going to make it. The 06 of LaFontaise has that final transfer now as he looks for more on the outside of Reichman. Off of turn four, Doug Erskine still with the lead. Slater running second, but LaFontaise testing the outside. And that rear wheel drive, 240. Nissan for the Twisted Metal Racing team. Down the back chute they go. So up front, it's still Erskine side by side for second between Slater and LaFontaise. Fourth and in the final transfer with three laps in and three to go. It is the 93 of Chris Reichman. Jason Gattu running in fifth now was disqualified for an injection problem on the car, Tommy. I think this is a moot point. Even if he gets in, he will probably not qualify, but getting his seat time anyways. Down into three they go. Doug Erskine trying to hold off. Tyler LaFontaise to the outside. LaFontaise, a strong car here in that 06, takes the lead with two to go. The 2014 track champion to the lead here in B-Main number two. Said he was excited to get this new car on the Ush Weekend dirt here. Been waiting all summer to get out here and he's got a good line out front leading the pack. Now Reichman to the inside here of Dirk Erskine through three and four. Still the top four running very close together. White flag out for LaFontaise. Erskine is second, third is Reichman, fourth is Slater. Katu working on a last ditch effort here to try to get a transfer spot. Down the back straightaway, Tyler LaFontaise into three and four for the final time. Doug Erskine, about six to 10 car lengths back a long way. Reichman gonna come along through and Slater will grab the final spot ahead of Katu. Those four will make it. LaFontaise, Erskine, Reichman, and Slater, the final four into the Art Hill Memorial tonight. So the fields are set, just feature races remain here. A very short intermission is coming up here. A bit of There we go, we've got them set and ready to go with a four hour wide salute. The field will fill in. Ladies and gentlemen, they only get to go four wide once a year. Get on your feet and wave these drivers on. Four cylinder stock cars, four wide and fancy. Coming off of corner number four, wave your hat, your program, whatever you got. This is the Art Hill Memorial. Special thanks to Lone Wolf Fireworks that light up the sky here every Friday night. Lone Wolf Fireworks on Highway 54 in Middleport. 
Jansons and Elliott will bring them to the white flag and next time by three sure of three features in a row. Here we go, guys. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. Here we go, double greens in the air from Dale Sunderman. We're underway, 42 laps to go here in the RDO Memorial as Brandon Jansen takes the early lead into quarter one. Jansen grabs the first bit of this lead, but coming down the back straight air, Robin Elliott in the Whismers 99 wants a piece of it. And he'll duck that Honda down to the bottom. We often see the first few laps of this race go green flag and somebody opens up a big lead. Almost contact there in the third position as Hughes, Salt, and Bazain very close together on the front stretch. Jansen's now Jake Bazine up into the side of Laura Hughes as they exit out of two. Hughes trying to hold that one tough now. She might have some damage on the left front. It looks all right, but Jake Bazine's car pushing up horribly in the turns. Bazine has missed a couple weeks here in that 12X with uh, a very sore back, so any contact with other cars has to be not so comfortable for the driver in the 12X, but he's holding that third spot for the moment as Jansen opens up the lead over Elliott, then hills to the inside on Bazine for third. Three wide back there in the third row. It's Mark Bazine, Hallett in the 18, and Salt on the outside. Then Longaro, John Jansen, Evans, and Hughes all right tight in the pack. Everybody getting sorted out here. Still three and four wide back in the pack, but up front it's all... Brandon Jansen's right now. Robin Elliott running a comfortable second. Bazin clear of everybody else for the third spot for the moment, but here comes his brother, Mark Bazin, last year's winner of the Air Hill 42, up into that fourth spot right on the tail end of the 12X. Lungaro on the inside of Laura Hughes as they come down the back straightaway, working a line here as they work it into three and four leaders coming together onto the front straightaway. Jake Bazine with all kinds of problems as his brother goes to the back. Back in the pack, Adam Hallett and John Jansen and Carl Salt all made some contact there out of turn four and down the front stretch. They get sorted out. Hallett very sideways in corner two, but up front it's still Jansen, then Elliott. Mark Bazine now clear of his brother Jake for the third spot. It's funny you mention those guys. They got into each other on the last lap and the officials were talking about it. And he says, well, they're brothers. And Dale says, I don't care. They still got to not hit each other. And they come out of turn number two. Mark Resign looking to back up last year's Art Hill win as he moves into the top three. Seven laps about to be on the board this time by. As Jensen's is still up front here. Elliott eating into his lead just a bit. As Bazin, Mark Bazin, that is, chasing both of them down. Track conditions much different than they were for last year's Art Hill 42. Working to the outside, still Brandon Jansen's right up on the outside rim here on the outside line. As they come onto the front straightaway, still Robin Elliott running in the second spot and Mark Bazine heavy on his inside quarter now through one and two. Points leader Jason Lagero picking his way through the pack here in that number seven car. He's up into the ninth spot as of the last time past the line here. Second place in points, Brandon Jansen's continuing to lead this one as Lagero picks his way through. Still, they take it to the high side. Jansen's has been running clean on the outside lane, working off the bottom. The 21X is behind, starting to chase the back bumper here of Jansen's. A regular 15 lap Friday night feature would see the five to go signal this time by. This time we have 32 laps still to go as Brandon Jansen's holding the lead, but here comes Mark Bazine to the inside. 10 in and Bazin challenging up on one of the other brother teammates as they come through three and four. Brandon Jansen's up on the outside. Mark Bazin wheeling it straight off the bottom. Robin Elliott still holding third. Well, Brandon Jansen's running three eighths of a mile. Mark Bazin running only about a third of a mile each lap, but somehow they managed to race side by side again down the back straightaway. Robin Elliott still about the same distance back in the third spot. Then it's Jake Brown, Jillian Hills, Sean Evans, Carl Salt, and a three-car race back there for a spot just inside the top 10 between Adam Hallett, Jason Laguerre, and John Jansen. 
Bazine sneaks underneath the Brandon Jansen 66X, but Jansen's back around the outside as they get to the end of the back straightaway. Jansen's better through three and four, I think, but Bazine straighter off the bottom grabs the drive. What a great battle we got. Bazine led that lap, but Jansen's back to the outside here. He's going to get a good runner to corner two again, just like he's done every time over the last number of laps here. Both those drivers about to see some traffic interfere with their side-by-side -side race for the lead. Yeah, this should get dicey here as they come up on the back bumper of the Twitch at 69. Hodgson, Schroeder, Cosgrove all right there as they work around one and two. Bazine on the bottom. Bazine clear of Jansen's now for the moment, but Jansen's reeling them back in as Twitchett runs that middle groove in front of them. Jansen's gets to the outside. Bazine to the inside as he puts a lap on Schroeder and Twitchett now working on Brian Crossgrove. Now Bazine down in the middle to bottom groove where the lap cars are. Jansen's Trying to drive around the outside of them now. Goes underneath the Schroeder 60. Back to the outside. Crossgrove trying to hang tough with the leader. So we are now officially past the distance of a regular Friday night feature. As Bazine has the lead here. Still over Brandon Jansen. Zen Elliott still third. Jake Bazine fourth. Jillian Hills fifth. Sean Evans now up to fifth around Hills. Then it's Salt seventh. John Jansen's eighth, Tyler LaFontese ninth, and Jason Laguerre up to the top ten. Mark Bazine around the outside, the Jason Dixon sixth to the inside of the Hodgson 49. As they get back to one, he's got about a quarter of a straightaway lead now over Brandon Jansen's. Third place is still Robin Elliott a long way back, then Jake Bazine and the 95 of Sean Evans. Still a long way to go in this one, not even to the halfway signal. It's going to be about endurance here and keeping these cars under these drivers for the next half of this race. 18 laps on the board now for Bazine up front as Jansen now gets clear of the traffic. He'll try to run Bazine back down. Just ahead of them, Laura Hughes will take the 10 car back to the pit area and retire that machine as they come off of four. Mark Bazine, Brandon Jansen's way loose off of four, but the third place machine of Elliott not able to make up any ground. Schroeder. Very slow down the front straightaway here in the 60 car. Schroeder trying to get that 60 car off the track so we can see green flag here as Bazine continues to lead. Yellow flag's going to come out for the 60 car of Martin Schroeder. Will not make it and he limps barely up the hill into turn number one as our junior flaggers throw in the yellow before Dale decides to. They, they figured we needed a yellow anyways, Tom. He didn't care what Dale felt. The yellow comes out here for Martin Schroeder, who loses power as he exited turn four and rolled very slowly down the front straight. Here we got 19 laps in. On the top Still side, but Bazine has just been faster. He gets, he's running much less distance around that bottom side than Jansen's is around the top. So at some point here, Jansen's may have to try and run that bottom side, but uh, you're running second in the Art Hill Memorial, an endurance race basically for these guys. So. He's got to hope that Bazine maybe has a problem here otherwise. But he looks pretty strong here as Bazine tries to defend his win from the Art Hill Memorial last year. Nine team complete, 23 to go here. We still have one more feature event to come after this one. Tyler LaFontese, that 06 car from the B main, he's up into the top eight now with some lapped cars between himself and the rest of the leaders. Field now coming back to green. Here we go. Jansen's gets the jump on Bazine and they will wheel it off into one. But you're right, Tommy needs to tuck it down right in front of that 21X. Jansen's strong out of corner two, like he's been the whole time here, and he gets a good run down the back stretch. Bazine, though, has been strong in turns three and four. Who's going to come out of this one with the lead? Robin Elliott not going away either. And behind them, Jason Laguerre, the points leader, goes around. Contact between several cars there. Hills, Jake Bazine, Dan Erskine. Andy Reichman all involved in that one. Yellow flag is coming out here. Yeah, you know what, Tommy? Somebody looked like they might have been slowing. It might have even been Longaro in the middle of the pack. Somebody slowed down as they were all entering three. And then right around Tyler LaFont, Taisy, Jillian Hills, uh, Longaro, they all four of them all come together there. Come around out of turn number four. Brandon Jansen's going to try and get a jump on Bazine again. He does get the power down faster. Bazine will race him into one. 
Along in the track again is Jake Bazan in the 12X, I believe still on the lead lap, but a long way back. Contact back there between Marutski and Twitchett. They'll keep it going here as side by side for the lead. Jansen's and Bazan, and now Evans, Elliott, and John Jansen's up into this fight. Here comes Brandon Jansen, still keeping Bazan honest here as they work it into one. Jansen's way up high again, Bazan with the drive out of two. Needs to just tuck it down a little bit, Tommy. Halfway that time by, Mark Bazan led the lap, but he gets sideways in corner three. Brandon Jansen's with a good run out of corner four. Who's gonna lead this lap? It'll be Brandon Jansen's back to the lead on lap 22. Both the leaders with a bit of a stutter step on the accelerator to avoid heavy contact as they got loose. Coming down the front straightaway, the field really tight through there. Now Dan Erskine to the side of Lucas Lubin who gets a piece of Newell who gets a piece of Smelzer, oh boy. Mark Bazine slips in corner four. Brandon Jansen's takes the lead back for good here now. Well, not for good, but for the moment. Brandon Jansen's back to the lead in the 66X. Mark Bazine now switches grooves, takes the 21X to the top side to see if he can do something with the leader. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm in Bazine's shoes, I'm gonna do that. Easy for us to armchair quarterback it from the infield and the tower. But I got to think if I'm Bazine, stick to your game plan. It was working. Jansen's though right to the middle. Here comes Bazine back to the bottom and the shorter way around. Well, that car was loose in three and four. A little bit better through one and two. As Bazine maybe moved up about a groove there in turns one and two. And that seems to have helped the handling a bit on the 21X. But it's still Jansen's up front. Brandon Jansen's looked like he was giving it away, and now it's coming back to him a little bit on the outside. 25 complete, 17 to go as they take it back to three, and Bazan closing in on the leader. Yeah, Bazan was next to him there out of corner two. Behind them, Robin Elliott about to feel some heat from John Jansen's, and look at Tyler Lafontese from the B-Mine. B main now up into the fifth spot in the 06 car. Yeah, another yellow could be just what LaFontaise needs in that car as he's cleared the rest of the pack for just coming into one now. The leader's already back to three and four as they come around through the middle. Oh, Adam Halleck goes around in the 18. J Dan Erskine nowhere to go. Piles into the driver's door on Adam Halleck's car. Yellow flag quickly out. Safety crew over there to check on the driver. That was a hard hit for Hallett as Erskine had nowhere to go. Well, Adam Hallett already with the helmet off here in the 18 car, appears all right. Looks like he's gonna climb out of the machine. We'll see if what kind of damage is required on both of these cars. Gonna need a push on the Hallett 18 car. Yeah, the left side stoved in a whole ton here. Wrecked up the bars pretty good. Adam Hallett ready to climb out. We get a look at the Erskine 69E as he's got it shortened up by a few inches on the left side. Everything appears to be pretty good for the Erskine machine. And he's just getting the safety gear back on. We get over here. Adam, not the way you wanted your art heel to go. Your first one uh, heavy damage here to the left side. How's your leg? Uh, it's all right. It's not bad. Uh, just more pissed off that the car's broken. That's, uh, that's all I really want to say about it. They got him, Adam Hallett. He's got a busy day tomorrow as part of the Oscar show and the Shane Gowan crew with his dad, Kelly. Over there, they'll be uh, at Flamborough with us for the day tomorrow. And uh, Greg, I got to tell you, and Tommy, the left side door bars really, really pushed in on that Hallett 18 car. If you get a chance to look at it in the pits, when I looked in the cockpit, really stuffed in on that left side. Very lucky he doesn't have a broken leg or anything there in that Hallett 18 car. Dan Erskine getting pushed back as well. We look like we're just about ready to go. I gotta say, Tommy, I thought he was giving it up there a few laps ago, but he's battled back to run very good this last stretch of green flag action. We talked about what a yellow could do for the Last year's champion, Tyler LaFontaise, he is now lining up third on the inside. Watch for these guys. As soon as the leader goes, green flag is out and you can pass. You do not have to wait for the cone. Here we go. And LaFontaise getting the jump like we said, and he's already up to third, Tommy. Good jump for LaFontaise. The 2014 track champ is on the move here in the 06 car. Back to the inside, though, it's Robin Elliott in the 99. Here comes Sean Evans 
and John Jansen's as well as Brandon Jansen's opens the lead. Yeah, that Elliott car just a lot faster than La Fontaise on the back straightaway, and Robin Elliott able to drive back underneath the 06 of La Fontaise as those four car battle into one, but John Jansen's looking at his brother Brandon leading this pack as he tries to come into third. Jason Langero has recovered nicely from that incident he had earlier, although I think he might be a lap down. Yes, Langero is a lap down, two laps down, in fact, to the leaders, but he's up running amongst the top five or six here. LaFontaise right out to the outside wall as Elliott fills the gap in the middle. LaFontaise has to go really high around the outside. That brings John Jansen to the bottom for third with Sean Evans pulling along with his exhaust and big trouble at two, Ruitsky. Curtis and Slater. Slater with the left front all stoved in on the 55. He's going to come to stop here and bring out the yellow. Chad Smelzer, big smoke out of the 90 car, and he will go to the pits as Slater working to get that car off the track. Hasn't been able to do it yet. And I think we're going to have to see a yellow here as Slater is in harm's way. And now, oh, as before we that, they bring this one, can't get it. Now we got more problems in turn number two. Slater with issue on the 55. Car won't roll at all. And he'll need a hook from the front. Well, Slater was uh, trying to get that car out of the way there. He was spinning the wheels, but the car would just not go anywhere. And now big trouble on the 39R of Andy Reichman over in corner two. Heavy steam or smoke out of that car. Laura Hughes with problems in the 10. The 3K of Evan, Evan Curtis being told to go to the pits as body works hanging off that car. Yeah, he's got the left front fender off that car. This Reichman 39R with the rad out of it. It's going to need assistance as well. And then Laura Hughes with the 10 car all punched in on her machine. She's going to need shots as well. Jansen's as they've been all race side by side basically. But now John Jansen's and Sean Evans up into this as well as we go back green flag. Rolling into one, Bazain on the inside. Jansen's working to the top. As they come to the inside, they bring it off of two. Everybody looking for racing lines. Jake Bazain sideways in corner two, almost collected a couple cars there as he slides back through the pack. Up front, Mark Bazain has the lead here as they'll see 12 to go this time by. Started with 28 starters, only 15 left. We lost a bunch in this one. Bazain and Jansen's both loose in turn number two. Jason Langero working to get some laps back here in that seven car. He is at two laps down in the orange seven, but he's running as quick as the leaders. Brandon Jansen's very sideways in corner two. That allows Mark Bazine to get away. Yeah, he's got 11 laps to go for the 21X of Mark Bazine. Sean Evans trying to get a dig on the inside now as he comes up underneath the seven of Langero, who's unfortunately down a couple laps. Yeah, Langero is making laps here, trying to stay on the track. He is the points leader coming into the night. So he's got to stay as close to Brandon Jansen's as he can and possibly get by him, get one of his laps back up front. It is all Mark Bazine right now as he continues to open up his lead. Bazine, Jansen's the top two, then the third battle. It is between Evans and on the outside. Now here comes John Jansen's in the 66 around the top side. Jansen's gets clear of Sean Evans for the third spot. Again, the seven of Longaro is a lapped car, so third up for grabs between Jansen's, Evans, and Elliott and LaFontese also in that. Mark Bazin continuing to open up his lead here with now eight laps to go. Another yellow is what Jansen's needs here. If he's gonna take a shot, that would certainly help out his brother John in the Sierra Construction 66. Is They'd all be able to stack the deck right behind Mark Bazine, who looks to be on his way now to his second consecutive Art Hill Memorial. Brandon Jansen's trying to cut into that lead, but he doesn't that time by. Mark Bazine a tenth of a second faster as Jansen's continues to run the top side. Bazine to the middle and lower grooves. Down into four, Mark Bazine right on the inside rail spot. John Jansen's trying to catch his brother Brandon for the second spot, but he still has a lot of ground behind. Still would be a good finish, Tommy, for the Jansen boys to finish two and three. Yeah, the big picture of the points race is 
important for Brandon Jansen. He came in the night second in the points, just 14 behind Jason Lanquero. So he stands to gain a bunch here as things run right now. Just five, make that, yeah, five to go now for Mark Bazina up front. I would say it's got to be pretty darn close to tightening things up there, Tommy. Should bring it to fairly close positions as Longaro is going to finish back around 15th and Jansen's looks like he's en route to a top three finish here. Yeah, Longaro currently running 14th and not able to make up much ground now as the race comes to a close. Bazine opening up his lead some more over Brandon Jansen's. Then it's John Jansen's running third as he gets clear of the lap car of Longaro. Evans is fourth, and Robin Elliott still hanging on to a top five in front of LaFantasi. And Rowitzki back out in the four after getting the parts removed from his car. We keep it rolling. Here we are, just three laps to go as Mark Bazine takes it into turn number three. Off of four, he'll see two in the air from Dale Shuneman. So two to go now for Bazine. That car's got to stay together, just two more laps for Mark Bazine as he tries to go back to back in the Art Hill Memorial 42. Well, it was his race kind of gave it up and now it's coming back to him here as he pulls away to a three quarters of a straightaway. Lead for Mark Bazine, white flag in the air for the final time around. Bazine through corners one and two cleanly. Some slower cars up ahead, but he won't catch them before the end of this one. Down the back stretch the final time is Bazine as he tries to take his second win in a row in the Art Hill Memorial 42 out of corner four. Mark Bazine is going to get the checkered flags from Dale Shunneman. He's the winner. Second is Brandon Jansen's. Third will be John Jansen's. Fourth at the line, Sean Evans is going to get that over Robin Elliott. Then it's LaFontese sixth, Chris Reichman seventh, Jake Bazine eighth. Lucas Lubin, ninth, and Matt Newell will round out the top 10. He is ready to climb out of the k event design number 21X. Here he is, the winner of the Art Hill Memorial 42 for the second year in a row. Got some hardware here for you, Mark. This one's heavy, so watch out when I hand it to you. So Mark Bazine back to back here in the Art Hill Memorial. First time that's been done since Mitch Brown did it over five years ago, so that's got to feel good. but. Uh, Looked like for a while Brandon Jansen's might have had something for you, but at the end this car was really strong. Yeah, at uh, 10 laps in, I thought I had a tire go down. Uh, just just switched real loose on me and then uh, came back and the car was fast. Well, obviously an endurance race here. What does it take to get this car ready for a race like this? It's got to go over every nut and bolt on it. Uh, try and make sure you can take all the uh, what ifs away and uh, try and keep them cool. That's the biggest thing. It's uh, nice with all the caution, though. It's, she stayed pretty cool tonight. Bunch of folks helped you go over every nut and bolt on this car to get ready for this week. Who do you want to thank? Uh, I got to thank all my sponsors, uh, K-Wear Event Design, uh, Caledonia Auto, uh, Starlight Engraving in Caledonia, uh, Yale Auto Aftermarket. I want to thank my wife, uh, my brother, John, uh, Reese in the pits, and uh, thank all the Grand River uh, Power Sports guys are all here tonight. That's Mark Bazine. He's your winner in the Art Hill 42. We'll get the 50-50 sellers in here so Mark can make somebody a few bucks richer. Well, maybe more than a few. $1,057.50 going to the winner here. Get out those 50-50 tickets. 088-284. So that's 088-284. Mark Bazine's drawn your number here. 088-284. Make sure you pick up your 50-50 prize with the sellers at the base of the flag stand. Well, Brandon, solid run for you, second here tonight. There was a point when Mark looked like he had you covered, then through the middle portion, you came back and looked like it was going to be your race. Talk about running that top side, and your car just seemed to like it best up there. Maybe not the best run to grab the win here tonight. Yeah, I, I primarily stayed along the top line there. It seemed to be working for most of the time, and then when uh, Mark got by me, I tried to mimic his line a bit, but 
I just, I just couldn't make it work like him. He, he had a really good race. I, I couldn't catch him, and I, I feel like I was turning some of the fastest laps I ever have, too. So, You definitely ran a great race. Jason Longuero had all kinds of problems. He finished back around 15th. Certainly going to tighten up the points coming to the final couple weeks. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, that's too bad for Jason, but that's really good for me. That puts a smile on my face. So A big smile. Congrats, Brandon. We'll talk to your brother John here. John, a uh, good run for you. I mean, these guys were putting on the class in the field tonight. You had a good view of it, just not quite close enough. Maybe another yellow or two might have helped you out. Yeah, I don't know if I had anything for these guys. They were real fast tonight, but what a heck of a lot of fun, and it was a heck of a lot of fun chasing Brandon around a little bit there. And It's a good night for us. Uh, we are hoping for the win tonight, but uh, it's pretty good showing, so we can't be uh, unhappy about that. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. How about him for your top three in the Art Hill Memorial for 2015? Mark Bazan, your winner, Brandon Jansons, and John Jansons will round out the top three here. We've got one more race to come. It's the Sprint Cars for the Crate Power Division, sponsored by our good friends at Strickland's GMC. Make sure you get over there and check them out if you need new wheels. Strickland's GMC, proud sponsors of the Crate Division, coming up next.